Okay, so our next speaker, Brandon Metcalf, is an entrepreneur, an investor, and a music producer. All the cool things. By the time he was 30, he had launched a business and generated over $50 million in revenue. He's invested in dozens of companies, songwriters, and artists. And he's been involved in songs that have collectively streamed over a billion times. He promises me I know at least one or two of them. He credits the person he is to a foundation established by his parents. He's excited to tell you about the advice from his mom that he ignored to get where he is today. Let's give it up for Brandon Metcalf. All right. Things our mothers say. Brush your teeth, comb your hair, say you're sorry, say your prayers, wash your face, wash your hands. What part of no don't you understand? Eat your veggies, share your toys, turn it down, you're making too much noise. And if words didn't work, she might try to trick us and say, hey kids, let's play the quiet game. If you don't stop making that face, it'll get stuck that way. Sit down, hold still, stand up straight. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And if you don't wake up, you're going to be late. Move back from the TV, you're sitting too close. Watch your sister, watch your mouth, fold your clothes. If you want a snack, you're on your own because my kitchen, well, after 10 p.m., it's closed. And that one might be unique to my mother. She liked to use that one when we got a little hungry late at night. It's true that moms have no shortage of phrases that direct us as kids. Honestly, I was a pretty good kid. I really, uh, I, I wasn't very disobedient, but once in a while, I had to rebel. And I'm gonna share with you a few times that I ignored my mother's advice and how it helped me become the person I am today. As a kid, my life revolved around basketball. If I wasn't playing, I was researching player statistics on a Windows 95 CD-ROM. Remember those? And if I wasn't doing that, I was watching my favorite team, the Seattle Supersonics. In 1994, Detlef Schrempf was traded to us. And I was old enough by then to know that I wanted my hair styled just like his. In 1996, I watched those Seattle Supersonics go all the way to the NBA Finals where they would take on another childhood hero, Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's right. Now, they didn't win, but that's okay because I liked MJ as well. Now, MJ has been quoted saying... If you give up one time, it becomes a habit, so never quit. And I know that now because I have the internet. If you visit his Wikipedia page, you'll learn that as a sophomore, he went out for the varsity team and he didn't make the team. His coach cut him. He said he was too short. He was only five foot nine, not tall enough. He went home and cried like a baby. But he was determined. He cites that as a turning point in his life and in his career because it motivated him and he worked hard. And it didn't hurt that he grew an extra four inches that summer. But he came back and as a junior he made the team. He led the team in scoring, averaging 25 points a game. And as a senior he was selected as an All-American. When I was 11 years old, I went out for a tryout for the first team that actually required tryouts. Before then, if you sign up, you're on the team. And I did pretty well. I was shooting, I was dribbling, I was crossing over. I looked good, too. I had my new shoes on. I loved it. I just knew, I was so confident. So after tryouts, I went to visit the coach and I had to let him know that he had made a, a little mistake on the list of names for the team because mine wasn't on it. I said, coach, my name's not on here. What's going on? He told me, much like MJ's coach told him, look, you, 
you're all right, but you're too short. I was devastated. I went home just like MJ, and I cried like a baby. But unlike MJ, I did not use that to motivate me, to work hard, to do better. That's what my mom told me to do. She said, don't quit, don't give up, work harder, do better. I said, mm, mm, I don't wanna. I was too bummed out. I quit, I gave up. I didn't have Wikipedia to learn that MJ had got cut. I just thought, there's no more future in this for me. It was one of the best decisions that I ever made. Because shortly thereafter, there was a local paper boy who was looking for someone to pass his route off to. And as fate would have it, those basketball practices would have prevented me from accepting an invitation to deliver papers for the Seattle Times. And that paper route actually became a very important foundational piece of my life as an entrepreneur. It taught me how to work hard. Paper boys, not only do they not ever get a day off, ever, the whole year, but on the weekends and the holidays when other people do, we have more work. The papers, they're three times as thick with all the advertisements. I had more houses to deliver to. But it taught me to work hard. So, I, ignoring my mother's advice, quitting basketball was, allowed me to shift my focus. Fast forward a little while later, I'm delivering papers on a brand new bike that I bought for myself. Not only that, but I got custom handlebars and pedals and everything matched. It was beautiful. I even got myself a pager, and I'm, I'm not too embarrassed to admit it. I was 12 years old, I had a pager. It was a good thing because it meant that my girlfriend at the time could send me a little page with some 143s at the end, and it meant that my mom could send me a page when it was time to come home for dinner. That meant I had a little bit more freedom so I could stay out a little bit longer. So after the papers were delivered and homework was done, I would go out with my friends with a full-size garden shovel strapped across my handlebars, riding out to the woods. I brought the shovel, John brought the rake, and Christian brought his dad's machete. But Christian's parents kind of let him do whatever he wanted, so it worked out. And in the woods, we built not just a singular bike jump, we built a whole bike track. On my way out the door, my mom would say, be careful. Ha. Be careful. I was anything but. We were reckless. As it turns out, the hobbies that I enjoyed as a teenager were pretty much the opposite of being careful because I would fling myself into the air, usually with some sort of apparatus strapped to my body, whether it's a bike or a snowboard or a wakeboard, and that's what I did. But broken bones, they heal, and they give us stories to tell. That paper route, allowed me to be reckless once again and use all of my savings and I invested in music equipment that would allow me to start my first business at the age of 15, DJing events and producing music and I was able to then earn a really good living at a, at a very young age. It also helped me to learn to take calculated risks that would continue through my career in business. It allowed me to achieve a personal goal of uh, earning my first million dollars by the time I was 25 and would continue. Something my mom liked to say when I was a teenager was to choose your friends wisely. This is the third thing that I ignored because I did that very well as a teenager, but as an adult, I totally blew it because by the time one of my businesses had generated uh, about $8 million a year in sales, I was ready to bring on a partner, shift my focus, and recklessly move myself across the country to pursue other ventures. We were not in alignment. We had a very 
challenging partnership, and I made pretty much every mistake that you could make. And I'm so glad that I did it. Because in losing the authentic leader that I was, I was able to more clearly define it later and become the person that I am now and the person that I'm trying to become every day. And that partner passed away a couple of years ago unexpectedly and it continues to be a challenge, but one that I accept wholeheartedly. You see, sometimes it's okay to ignore our mothers. For the most part, we should probably listen because other things they say, the years are short though long days seem slow, laugh a lot, let it go. When your journey leads you down a dead end road, no matter what, you can always come home. Follow your heart, chase your dreams, choose the right, count your blessings. In success and failure that each day of life brings pain and heartbreak are opportunities for learning. I know it hurts and life is tough, but keep your head up, don't give up. Be true to yourself and trust your gut. Your mama loves you no matter what. Thanks. <laughs>